So, Wifters, this is Prof. Gene. In this video, we're going to use some Swifty string instruments, that is, methods and properties and other techniques, to become virtuosos of string manipulation. The ability to work with strings is one of the most important skills in programming. We often want to compare and manipulate text, so in this lesson, we're going to pull up a playground. And even though the work that we'll do will be directly related to our Word Garden app, this video can also be viewed as a standalone lesson on working with strings. We're going to cover a bunch of techniques that you'll definitely want in your Swifty repertoire. We're going to learn how to search inside strings with contains, has prefix, and has suffix. We're going to learn to alter strings with remove first, remove last, and replacing occurrences of with. We're going to learn to get capitalization just right with uppercase, lowercase, and capitalized. We're going to learn to iterate through strings. We'll create a string using a repeated value, and we'll also have a couple of challenges, the results of which we'll we use in the Word Garden app in a subsequent video. Swifters, I don't want to string you along any further. Let's code! So let's get right to it. In Xcode, let's create a new playground, and I'm going to call mine string work. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the contains method, which checks to see if a string contains another string. Now, I'll check to see if my last name contains the word laugh. It does. It's an unusual spelling of Gallagher, or as the Irish pronounce it, Gallagher. But if you'll kindly indulge me, we'll use this as a feature, not a bug, to demonstrate how the contains method works. Now, I'll create a variable, my name, equal to Gallagher capital G, lowercase a-l-l-a-u-g-h-e-r. And on the next line, we'll create the string we're searching for within my name. So I'll write var smaller string equals, and that'll be the string laugh, all in lowercase, l-a-u-g-h. Then on the next line, we'll say if my name, and if I start to type dot contains, check this out. Xcode sometimes does this. There's an option up here that says contains, and in parentheses regex, with plus five more next to it. Now we'll skip what regex means. We don't need to use any regex in our app. But we can read this by saying there are five ways to use the contains method that accept the single input parameter with no argument label. You see the dash in here? Remember, that means that there's no argument label. Now, to see these five methods, code completion down here tells us that we can simply press the right arrow on the keyboard. So definitely look for the more option if you can't find what you're looking for in code completion. And let's try this out. So I'm going to highlight this option that just has regex inside. I'm going to press the right arrow key, and I do see five more contains methods that only accept one input value and don't have any argument label. I see I can pass in a character, a string, a substring, among other things. At this point, the only thing that's important to us is the string option, since the variable that we created up here, smaller string, is defined as a string. Now we can actually pass in any of these five options where we pass in a single argument and there's no argument label. Even if we accepted one of the other ones, if we passed in a string, Swift would automatically know that we want to use the one that accepts the string. But it's sometimes useful to go in and check the different values, highlight the one you're interested in, and see if there's anything interesting in code completion. But you can see here that I've highlighted the option that accepts a string, and unfortunately there's no description in here in code completion, but we do see that this returns a bool value, a true or false value, and we can correctly assume that this will return true if the string my name in this case contains the string we pass in, so let's press return to accept this and we'll pass in smaller string. Open and close curlies, inside this I'm going to say print String interp contains string interp, my name contains small string. Else, open and close curlies, print, there is no string interp in string interp, and that'll be there's no smaller string in my name. Shift return, Gallagher contains laugh. Hopefully you like my jokes and think this is a positive. Let me know in the comments if you do. Otherwise, if you don't like the jokes and puns, well, we'll just move on. By the way, contains doesn't only work on strings, it works on other collections like arrays. So if you want to see if an array contains an element, you could use contains there as well. And just to test other conditions, there was this terrible comic back in the 70s and 80s. He's still around. He smashes watermelons. His name is Gallagher without the U. That's the way most Gallagher spell their name. So let's remove the U from my name. Shift return to run the code. It says there's no laugh in Gallagher without the U, spelled like the watermelon guy, which is probably right. That watermelon thing wasn't really all that funny. You can look it up on YouTube if you want. I don't recommend it. But things are looking sunny for you, though, because you now know how to use the contains method. And to mark these in my notes, I'll put a comment up here that says contains. And in the selection below, we're going to show has prefix and has suffix, so I'll put a comment there too. And we'll demonstrate these methods by searching for a substring in an occupation name. So we'll say var occupation equals the string Swift developer. And below that, we'll say var search string equals Swift. Then to see what the has prefix method does, on the next line, we'll enter print 
and in parentheses, occupation dot has prefix. For some reason, has prefix has no description in code completion, but we see it returns a bool, so it's pretty self-explanatory. So we'll press return, accept this, and between the parens, we'll pass in search string, then shift return, and since we get a bool value, we see that this simply prints out true. That's because the occupation, Swift developer, has the prefix search string, which is Swift. We can say if occupation dot has prefix passing in search string, open and close curlies, and inside we can say print you're hired. Else, in between curlies we can say print no job for you. Pressing return, we see that we get you're hired because the search string is swift and the occupation is swift developer. May you have similar success in your career. But if we change the occupation from swift developer to real estate developer, shift return, no job for you. And to make this clear in our notes, I'm going to get rid of that first print statement that printed the Boolean value, and instead I'll say print backslash n prefix search. Then I'll copy and paste this set of code here, paste it down below, and this is where we're going to work on a suffix, so I'll change it to print suffix search, and inside I'll say if occupation has suffix search string. And above this, why don't we update the occupation and search string so that it works well with the has suffix. We'll say occupation equals iOS developer and search string equals developer. And why don't we modify these print statements? So if it's true, we'll say we need more string interps occupation. And below that, we'll say no job for you. No one needs any string interps occupation. And we'll shift return. We need more iOS developers. Outstanding. But if we change occupation from iOS developer to iOS hater, no job for you. No one needs any iOS haters. Now onto our next example. We'll put in a comment saying this is dot remove last. And we'll put in a print statement with the escaping character backslash n remove. And for this example, let's go to the world of rock and roll. So we'll say var band name equals the white stripes. And then we'll imagine Jack White wants to go out on his own. So we'll say let last care equals band name dot remove last. Code completion says this removes and returns the last element of a collection. Now it knows it's operating on a string, so it's going to return a character. However, because it says it does work on collections, you could use this on arrays or other collection types. Now this modifies the original string, which is important because you can't call this on a constant because it's going to modify that original string. Now even though this returns a character, it's also okay to ignore that return value if you don't need the return value. That's what we're going to do here because we don't really care about the character at the end. We just want to modify the string that we call remove last on. So we'll press return here and below this we'll put in a print statement. After we remove string interp last care, the band name is just string interp band name. Shift return. And after we shift return, we see down below the console says, after we remove S, the band is just the white stripe. That's the remove last method in action. So if we've got to remove last, what about remove first? Let's enter a comment dot remove first and we'll print the escaping character backslash N remove first. And you know what? Remove first works just like remove last. So why don't we use a different option in here? We'll say in the comment, remove first, and then in parentheses, I'll say K colon int. This is going to remove the first K characters. And in the print statement, we'll just say remove first number sign. And oh, as our example, why don't we revoke the license of the worst doctor in the history of cartoondom? I'm speaking, of course, of Dr. Nick from The Simpsons. So in the next line, var person equals, and in quote, Dr. Nick. And below that, we'll say let title equals the string Doctor entered just as the title above it. And we'll write this so we can remove any title from any person's string. So we'll say person dot remove F and we see remove first has two options in here. Use the arrow key to select the option that has the K colon in there. Code completion says this removes the specified number of elements from the beginning of the collection. That's the beginning of the string in this case. Of course, since it says collection, you could remove the first K elements of an array if you would like. So press return to accept this. And if we want to remove any title that we'd pass in here, we could say title dot count. Now this result is not quite optimal. Let's see if you can catch why. Let's say print person down below and we see, oh yeah, we've got space Nick. How come? Well, when we removed title dot count, we didn't remove the single space that's in between doctor and Nick. And instead we can just modify the remove first statement. So we're going to remove the first title dot count plus one shift return. And there we see we've taken away Dr. Nick's license. He is now just Nick. And now let's put in a comment for the next method we're going to try out. That's dot replacing occurrences. And in parentheses, it's of colon with colon. And then the next line, we'll say print backslash n replacing occurrences of. 
Now this is a super useful method, especially when it comes to data cleaning. Because remember, you could have multiple strings that refer to the same thing, but that are spelled slightly differently. And a lot of times when you work with data analytics, data mining, machine learning, you may have data that comes from different sources and it might've been recorded with different standards. And to show this, I'll put an example in the comments. We'll have three different street addresses for the very same street. The first one uses the ST dot abbreviation. The second one is just ST. And the last one is the full word street. So a human being looks at those three addresses and says they're the same thing. A computer looks at those three addresses and sees three different things. You want to use this in computing, then you got to clean it up. And if you want to clean up your data, replacing occurrences of with is a great method to use. And so why don't we try this out? We'll say var address equals, and in double quotes, pass in this first option, 123 James Street, that's capital S, lowercase t, period. And then we'll create a variable of the value that we want to find to replace. So we'll say var street string equals, and we'll pass in the string just as we see it above, capital S, lowercase t, period. So we'll consider the abbreviation st period like this to be dirty data. What do we want to replace it with? We'll create a variable for that too. var replacement string equals, and here we'll use the full name street capital S lowercase t-r-e-e-t. -E -E so we'll put our revised address into a variable var standard address, and we'll set this equal to address, our initial address, dot, and as I start to type in replacing, we've got lots of different options in here, but we want the option that says replacing occurrences of with, so select that, and code completion says this is going to return a new string with all occurrences of the target string in the specified range of the string replaced with another given string. In other words, it'll look for all occurrences of the string you pass in after of, and it'll replace that with the string you pass in after with. So press return to accept this, and for the of option we're going to replace occurrences of street string with replacement string. Then we'll print out how about standard address comma address shift return and down below, we see the new modified standard address is 123 James Street with the full word street in there. And the original address was 123 James ST period with the abbreviation. So we replaced the string, standardized it on the full word string. Nice. Now here's a challenge to think about. I'm not going to show you the answer to this one, but as a comment, I'll put in a challenge for you to try out. What would you do if we had 123 St. James Street? So that we have an abbreviation for St. ST period, and we have the abbreviation for Street ST period. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe we'll present this in class, and if you're not in class, I'm sure you can figure it out on your own. And next up, I'll put in a comment that says we're about to iterate through a string. And we'll put in a print statement with backslash n that says we're going to iterate through backwards string, or go through a string backwards letter by letter. And it would help if I spelled print properly. Now before we iterate through a string backwards, let's do it forward. And you can use a name. Why don't we say var name equals. Put your own name in if you'd like. I'm going to use my name, Gallagher. And then we iterate through a string the same way we'd iterate through an array. So we can say for letter in name, open and close curlies, print letter. Then down below, we see each letter prints out in a separate line. Well, how about a challenge? Can you print your name on a single line, but with all the letters backwards? Pause. Give it a try. Resume when you're ready. And let's take a look at one answer. Now, one thing to remember, if we option click on letter, letter is going to be a character, not a string. Now, why don't we build up the string each time we go through the for loop one letter at a time? So we'll call this end result that we're going to be building up a backwards name, but it should initially start out empty. So just above the for loop, we'll say var backwards name equals empty string. So we're going to start out, there's nothing in backwards name, but we're going to create that inside the for loop. And inside that loop, we'll say backwards name equals letter plus backward name. But oh yeah, that's not going to work out because we can't add a character to a string. No biggie. You know many ways to fix this. One way is to simply put the word capital string in front of the constant letter and wrap that constant in parentheses. Then down below, why don't we print out string interp comma string interp. In the first string interp, we'll put name, and in the second one, we'll put backwards name. Let's run this with a shift return, and we get Gallagher, and then Gallagher backwards. Nice. Now, some of you might have remembered that we learned about the reversed method, so you might have thought you could try it here. Settings, for example, backwards name equals to name dot reversed with parentheses, but unfortunately, this doesn't work on strings. If we try to print this out, we eventually get an error in code completion. No reversed candidates produce the expected contextual result type string. That just means the result of name.reversed is not a type string. No biggie. Our method works fine. But I will show you one other way to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight this code from backwards name equals empty string. I don't need the var in here because I've already declared this. And I've highlighted through print name comma backwards name. So copy this. Then I can highlight this backwards name, the print line that don't work 
work, and I'll paste what I just copied over these two errant lines. And here in my for loop, I can iterate on name.reversed, so that will start at my last letter and go to the beginning letter. So even though I can't assign name.reversed to a string or even print this out and have it look like the reverse name, I can say name.reversed, and that'll iterate on the string as if it's iterating on a reversed array, last letter to first letter. And I can change the line inside the curly so it reads backwards name equals backwards name plus string letter. Or I could use the simplified notation backwards name plus equals string letter. Then shift return down below and we get Gallagher comma backwards Gallagher. And I have a little bit of print pollution down here, but if I click stop and the play button again, I can see, yep, it's working fine. So a couple of ways to solve that challenge. I hope you found it useful to see two solutions. Next up, we're going to work with capitalization. So I'll put in a comment that says capitalization and a print statement backslash n that says playing with caps. Now capitalization is really important in working with strings, especially when you're comparing strings, because capitalization matters when comparing strings, and a string with uppercase letters is different from a string with lowercase letters. Then to test this out, I'm going to create a variable in the next line var crazy caps equals, and I'll say swift developers, but I'll randomly include either uppercase or lowercase letters. Then below this, I'm going to create a variable var are uppercased, set that equal to crazy caps dot uppercased. This is a method we can tell by the M and the two parentheses afterward. It doesn't accept any variable, but it returns a string, which is an uppercased version of the string. Press return to accept this. Well, if there's an uppercase, is there a lowercase? Yes, there is. So in the next line, we'll say var lowercase equals crazy caps dot lowercase. We can see in code completion, it returns a lowercase version of the string. Press return to accept this. And there's one more way that we can work with caps. We'll say var capitalized equals crazy caps dot capitalized. And capitalized says that this is a copy of a string with each word changed to its corresponding capitalized spelling. Now, curiously, you see the P up here. That means it's a property. It's actually a calculated value. And so we just refer to the property name. We don't put parentheses afterward. The other two options we used, uppercase and lowercase, were both methods. Now, methods are functions on a type, and functions, as we know, need to have parentheses. That's why we have parentheses after uppercase and lowercase. No, I'm not sure why the geniuses in Apple decided that uppercase and lowercase need to be methods, but capitalized should be a computed property. I'm sure they've got their reasons. I suppose I should ask one of my former students who's a lead on the Swift UI team. But regardless, Xcode would go ahead and insert parentheses if we need them. We don't need them here, so press return to accept this. Then on the next line, why don't we print crazy caps, and below that we'll print uppercase, comma, lowercase, comma, capitalized, shift return to run this code. And in the console, we see the crazy cap Swift developer, but below that we see Swift developer in all caps, in all lowercase, and then just with the capital letters in front of Swift and developer. And just to show you that crazy caps hasn't been changed, I'm going to copy the line for print crazy caps, put that down below, shift return, to enter this code again, and we see, yep, crazy caps was not changed. Nice and very handy. So now let's use what we've learned about strings and iterating through strings for another challenge. And we'll leverage the solution to this challenge in the Word Garden app in our next video. So in our Word Garden app, a word that the user is challenged to guess will show up in a revealed word variable as underscores with spaces between the letters. So for example, if the word to guess is Swift, S-W-I-F-T, then the revealed word should be five underscores separated by spaces. Now assume that the word the user will be guessing is held in a variable named word to guess and write a routine that will return a value revealed word that contains an underscore for every letter and word to guess with a space between each underscore. Now you can do this right in the playground. You don't even have to create it as a function. Why don't you pause here, give this a shot, resume when you've given this a try, and I'll show you a couple of working solutions. So I'll first enter a comment word to guess challenge and print backslash n word to guess, then create a variable word to guess equals in quote swift all caps. And then I'll create a variable revealed word and initially set this equal to the empty string. And now let's iterate through word to guess for letter in word to guess open and close curlies. And there are a few ways we could do this. Why don't we start out by saying revealed word equals revealed word plus, and then the string, the underscore character, and a single space. Now this is almost what we want. Why don't we print out string interp word to guess will show as string interp revealed word and I've got quotes around my second string interp 
And if I shift enter below, this looks good, but there's an extra space at the end of the word to guess. Well, we know how to get rid of the extra space at the end of a string, but before I do that, I see that there's a warning up here. Xcode is saying, hey, you didn't use the constant letter that you've got here. And it reminds me that I can replace this with an underscore, no relation to the underscore in our string. Now I don't have to do this, my code doesn't have an error, but I'll do this to silence the warning. Then I'll go just above the print statement and I'll say revealed word dot remove last, open and close parens. And if I shift return below to execute all of my code, I can see I've now got five underscores separated by four spaces. Perfect. Now here's another solution where we don't even need this line with removed last. So I'm gonna delete this line and I'm gonna change the string that I add to revealed word to instead of underscore space, now it'll be space underscore. And we're gonna start out with the revealed word not equal to an empty string, but equal to an underscore. Now this almost works, but this is gonna give us one more space underscore than we need. But instead of iterating on word to guess, what we'll do instead is we'll iterate on a range and we'll do one character less than the length of word to guess since we start out with that underscore. So let's replace word to guess with one dot 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 word to guess dot count minus one. Now this is gonna work assuming that any word to guess is at least two letters. And I think that that's a fair assumption. If we had something that was less than two letters then we wouldn't get a valid range to work with. So now let's go ahead and shift return down below. And this works great too. Same answer. Now I'm gonna show you one more super efficient method that doesn't involve using loops at all. It involves using a technique to create a string based on a repeating value. So I'm gonna enter a comment below that says create a string from a repeating value. And we'll say here revealed word equals, and we'll start this with a string which is just simply one underscore, since every revealed word is going to start with an underscore. And then we'll say plus, and then we'll give the type of data that we're creating, which is a string, capital S, followed by an open parenthesis. And you see what this reveals in the code completion? It's a bunch of different ways that we can create strings, and there are a whole bunch in here. These are sometimes called initializers, since we're initializing a new string. And we can scroll down here, these are alphabetized, and I wanna find the option for repeating. Now we see there's a plus one next to the repeating option, that suggests there's one more repeating method that's not being shown. We see the method with repeating characters in here, and if I press the right arrow key like we learned before, I reveal another repeating option, and oh great, this is one with a string, which is what I want. If we highlight this, code completion says that this takes a string and a count, which is an integer, and the description says it creates a new string representing the given string repeated the specified number of times. In other words, this is going to create a string that's the string that we pass in repeated count number of times. That's what we want. So press return to accept this. And for repeating, we're gonna put in between quotes, space, underscore. And for count, we'll just say, word to guess dot count minus one. And down below, we'll print indicating that we're using repeating string. And below this, we'll simply say print, and in parentheses, revealed word. Shift return. And will you look at that? Same result, but this time, it took us only one line of code to get there. Super slick. And now we've got our final challenge, the revealed word after last guess challenge. And we'll use the code that we're about to write in our word garden app as well. But first we'll solve the challenge in the playground and then we'll add the code to word garden in the next video. So in our word garden app, as the user guesses a letter, we will eventually add the guest letter to a string named letters guest. Now what I want you to do is to write a routine, it doesn't have to be a function, that'll go through all of the letters in the variable word to guess, checking to see if that letter in word to guess has been guessed. Hint, you're going to check to see if the letter in word to guess is in letters guest. And if it is, reveal the letter. If not, show an underscore and add a space between the letter or the underscore. And that result should be inside of a variable named revealed word. Now as an example, the image at the right shows the revealed word, that's this string here, if the user had guessed the letters S, Q, F, T, and X. In other words, if we pass in letters guessed equals S, Q, F, T, X, and word to guess equals swift, all uppercase letters, then your code should show revealed word as the string S underscore underscore FT with spaces between the letters and the underscores. So pause, give this a try Swifter. I know you can do it. And resume and let's compare answers. 
So we'll start with a comment here, reveal the word, and also print a line that says reveal the word. Now the comment should say reveal the word, not reveal the world. That would be an entirely different app. And on the next line, we'll say var word to guess equals swift. And then under that, we'll say var letters guessed equals, and we'll start out with the same thing we had in the challenge slide, sqftx. So we haven't added this part to WordGarden yet. But eventually, each letter that the user guesses will be added to this string, letters guessed. And on the next line, we'll start with revealed word equals empty string, and we'll fill this out in our code. Then we'll put in a comment, loop through all the letters in word to guess, and we'll loop through with four letter in word to guess, open and close curlies. Uh, and I'm getting this error here because I've already declared word to guess, so I just need to get rid of the var keyword in the front of this. So here we're checking to see each letter in word to guess to see if the letter in word to guess is in letters guessed. In other words, we're saying, did you guess this letter already? So the way we do this in code is we say, if letters guessed dot contains, remember that guy from earlier in the lesson, letter. Then open and close curlies, and we write this in our code as revealed word equals revealed word plus string interp, letter inside the string interp, and a space after the string interp. Then after the if case curly, we'll say else, open and close curly, and I'll add a comment. If not, add an underscore plus a blank space to revealed word. And in the code, that's just revealed word equals revealed word plus the string underscore space. Then after we've gone through all of the letters using the for loop, remember we're going to have an extra space at the end, but we remove that extra space with revealed word dot removed last. Open and close parens at the end, but code completion inserts those. Now let's print out these values. We'll say print word to guess equals string interp word to guess. Print letters guess equals string interp letters guessed. And print string interp revealed word equals revealed word. Now let's shift enter and marvel at the majesty of your code. Word to guess is swift, letters to guess is sqftx as expected. But the result, the big reveal is, the revealed word is s underscore underscore ft. This is looking good. Let's change this up a little bit to make sure that things are working right. What if we add a W to the letters guessed? Shift return at the end, and nice, we get S W underscore F T. What if we guess a bunch of letters that aren't in the word? So we'll change letters guessed to Q X R L M, shift return, and at the end we see the revealed word is all underscores. Nice. Then I'll command Z to undo and get back to the previous letters guessed. And now let's change the word to guess from Swift to, how about Star Wars, all caps as one word. May the force be with you. And then we'll shift return at the end. And oh, will you look at that? It recognizes STW. And S appears twice in this word, even though we guessed it only once, which is exactly the result that we want. Swifter, you are now a string sorcerer. Let's move on to the next video where you can take the code you just wrote and put it in the WordGarden app. Keep hacking!